good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to the ceremony. My name is Betsy Jividen. I'm the commissioner of the newly formed Division of Corrections and Rehabilitation. And on behalf of the men and women of correction, I would like to welcome you all here today and ask that to start off, if you would please rise for the pre presentation of the colors by the Division of Corrections and Rehabilitation Honor Guard. Honor Guard, halt. Post the colors, march. Ready. Post. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Praise and arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order, arms. About face. March. Forward. March. Be seated, please. It gives me great pleasure to open this ceremony, marking the turnover of the Wood County Holding Center to the West Virginia Division of Corrections and Rehabilitation which we are able to accomplish today because of the Corrections Consolidation Bill, which has allowed for the modernization and streamlining of corrections in West Virginia. Through the, thanks to this bill and through the concerted efforts of the Division of Corrections and Rehabilitations, along with our fellow law enforcement agencies, we can make greater progress toward fulfilling our overriding mission of protecting public safety and safeguarding law and order in our communities. We are all so thankful to Governor Justice and his administration and the legislature for the support they have shown to all the men and women of corrections in the pay raise issues um, and in the reten helping us to improve our retention and in consolidating us so that we can streamline and work together with law enforcement across the board. What this holding center will accomplish is that now when an offender is arrested, instead of having to transport the offender to the closest regional jail, the arresting agency will have the option of transporting the offender to this holding facility where they will be received, processed, and booked exactly the same as if they were in a regional jail. That will allow your community police officers to stay on the street, protecting law and order, doing their jobs, and not spending hours driving in the car and their vehicles back and forth to the regional jail. We have special guests here today. It would be an honor for me to recognize these special guests. Captain David Lemon from the State Police, Senator Mike Azinger, Delegate Bill Anderson, Delegate Vernon Chris, Delegate Ray Holland, Delegate John Kelly, Judge John D. Bean, Judge Robert A. Waters, Judge Jason Wharton, President Blair Couch, Commissioner Jimmy Colombo, Commissioner Bob Tebay, Administrator Marty Sufer, Director Rick Woodyard, Chief Deputy Robert Sims, Sheriff Wayne Wilson of Pleasance County, Sheriff Travis Corbett, Work County, Deputy Sheriff Mike Deem, Wart County, Mayor Tom Joyce, Captain R.J. Young, Mayor Randy Rapp, Lieutenant Rob Pfeiffer, Mayor Gene Ford, and Chief Sean Graham. And I'm sorry if there's somebody on the list that I didn't get. Um, we're, we're thankful that you're here and we appreciate your, your coming. Recognizing um, the leadership also of the Division of Corrections. I'd like to introduce the leadership team and the members that are here in the back row. We have Paul Simmons and Mike Coleman, who are Deputy Commissioners. William Marshall, who is an Assistant Commissioner. Brad Hudson, who is, I'm sorry, who, 
not Fred Hudson. Um, Brad Douglas, who is my chief of staff. We also have here from the Parkersburg Correctional Center uh, Superintendent Russell Maston and some of his uh, supervisory staff as well. So thank you all for being here and thank you for the leadership that you continue to show. Today's event is a significant milestone in West Virginia Corrections. It's an opportunity to showcase the new Division of Corrections and Rehabilitation and to, exp and to expose our partnerships with both law enforcement groups and members of the community. And for all of this, we are especially grateful to you, Governor Justice, for your leadership and vision and support through all of this struggle. This is going to be a proud day for, for corrections. And one of the things that we'd like to do now is our, new, our newest officers from the Division of Corrections and Rehabilitation who formerly were employees of the Wood County Holding Center, if you would stand. And I would like it if Deputy Simmons and Deputy Coleman would come and present the badges to uh, these new officers. These two men have long, historic, um, illustrious careers as correctional officers, and it seems fitting to me that they should present these badges. Our new officers are Jeff Jacoby, Amber Willis, Zachary Beebe, here, Greg Brogdon, and Richard Tingler. Shake your hands. Good to go. Congratulations. Y'all could clap. I mean, yeah. I know. I know. One more. Great job. Great job. Welcome, everyone, to the Division of Corrections and Rehabilitation. We're so glad to have you on board with us. And we're so excited. Uh, a lot of us thought this day would never come, and we're all thrilled about uh, the events that's taking place here today. I'm going to introduce our first speaker. Uh, since Secretary came, Sandy came to the office a year and a half ago, he's had the overarching goal in streamlining corrections, making it more efficient, and today's events are a tribute to the success he has enjoyed and his vision and leadership and really his persistence which is the nicest word I could use for it, um, an initiative to see it through. Um, he is a great leader. He has helped us accomplish great things. I think more great things are on the way. And would you join me in welcoming Secretary Sandy? You know, you would think after that presentation that she is a very intelligent woman. But imagine this, she was a finalist for a federal judgeship, which is a lifetime appointment. And instead of staying in the running for that, she decided to become Commissioner of Corrections. But we thank you, Betsy. Betsy and I go back to 1982, and we worked to this day. It's still the largest narcotics case ever in West Virginia. A uh, guy by the name of uh, John Pankulis in Morgantown, West Virginia, kilos upon kilos of uh, pure cocaine. and it went all the way under her direction. We prosecuted not only the local people, but a millionaire who lived across the street from uh, President Bush's mother. And then also it led to the first indictment of the governor of Louisiana. So Betsy, thank you for taking that big pay cut. And Governor, thank you for nominating her and selecting her for that position. In December 21st, 2016, I met the governor. And the governor stated, I want to run West Virginia like a business. Very, think about that, very simple. Run it like a business. And right off the bat, we started looking at corrections. And imagine three different units, juvenile services, regional jail, and our prison system. Three different people ordering pens and pencils to cars to fixing doors. It wasn't very complex to decide we need to consolidate, and as a result, three budgets totaling 324 million, three budgets combining those and being stronger 
to pr protect the citizens of West Virginia. Very simple. So it took a year, and you're going to meet the people who worked on that team to rewrite that bill. Now, think about this. Run West Virginia like a business. Sheriff Wilson, could you please stand up? Sheriff Wilson, Sheriff Pleasance County. Sheriff Wilson, when he arrested an individual, his deputies or himself had to drive an hour plus to Doddridge County with that inmate. Today, the sheriff takes him five minutes, right? Five minutes, he takes him to St. Mary's facility, and we take that. Thank you, Sheriff. Deputy, well, I'll tell you what, that's scary, Judge, to have him behind you. Dep Deputy Dean, Work County, imagine. He arrests someone in Work County, has to go through Cisco Road, two-lane road, bad road, to Doddridge County. When I told him this plan, I'll have to tell him, he said, I could just stand up and hug you. And I said, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Chief Martin, who could not be here today, of the Parkersburg Police Department, he goes, unbelievable. He goes, my officers in Parkersburg, to be able to take them down the street, versus them driving all the way out to Doddridge County and coming back. This was a no-brainer. The consolidation was a simple no-brainer, and our delegates of the area unanimously voted for the passage of House Bill 4338, and I would appreciate it if you would give them a round of applause. <laughs> but don't, it's not only county and local, the West Virginia State Police Captain, West Virginia State Police, again, they can bring their people here. They're going direct to a state facility, and his men and women can immediately turn around, get back on the road, and protect the citizens of the Middle High Valley. Now, where does it go from there? We have the courts. When the weather is bad, many times, if a van is delayed, that trial that you guys are conducting, you, the witness may not be there on time. So with the holding center here, we'll be able to have those people here for you. And if a hearing extends past, past the time and you want to start the next morning early, that person will be here for you. So it also helps the court. It helps everybody. It helps everybody. So this, as the governor stated in his orders, run West Virginia like a business. That is what we're trying to do in governor we thank you so much for supporting this. And this bill, unanimous House of Delegates, unanimous Senate. We thank everyone. So, Betsy, do you want me to go ahead and introduce the next speaker? Or you got to do it. Go ahead. Yeah, that'd be great. But this took a cooperation of the county and the state. And we had extensive meetings with Wood County Commission and I'd like to introduce the president of the Wood County Commission, Blair Couch, who's going to give you some uh, updates on what his position is on the consolidation in our ribbon-cutting ceremony today. Uh, thank you, yeah, Secretary Sandy. Uh, we all know Jeff was involved when we decided to purchase this building in 2010. It was a complicated decision, but we had an old feed store that was serving as our magistrate court. We had a jail that was overbuilt for holding center operations. But Jeff was instrumental in creating the holding center that we hope uh, we can take a look at here in a little bit. Because of his leadership and because he knew what we were set up with, he also had intimate, had intimate knowledge as a sheriff of the troubles that we have to go through to transport 45 minutes down Route 50 to a regional jail without cell service, without being able to use the radio to contact help if something bad would happen. This will save Wood County $600,000 in its first year. It'll save us on our jail bill in the long run. And it'll save people that are arrested but innocent until proven guilty. They will have the opportunity to get bound out and not be out at a regional jail 45 minutes away on a payphone trying to find someone to come fetch them. That is a huge benefit to the people of Wood County. This is also a huge benefit for what everything that Jeff said. But the hope and prayer is 
that this is going to make operations much more smooth for adult probation, for juvenile probation, for the circuit judges, for the magistrates, for everybody involved. And it's all because of the vision of Governor Jim Justice, who today just gave us a million dollar truck to help respond to hazardous waste issues, now is taking over a facility that's going to save Wood County money. I don't know what we can say about this governor other than I've been in office for 12 years and I haven't had a governor spend a day up here with us ever. And so he's not just a Greenbrier Valley basketball coach who comes up here for games every now and again, but he's also a governor that wants to be on the road and do things. And he's showing it every day. But today's been a great day for Wood County and we're so very, very thankful. Um, Am I supposed to do something now? <laughs> well, is this the, I'm going to give, I'm supposed to give you the key to the jail. You are. All right, here you go. Take that, take give it to you. Thank you very That's much. That's nice All right, save the best for last. Um, we're especially honored by the presence of, our, presence of our next speaker and honored as well by his support and that of his administration for the passage of the consolidation bill, the raises, and the development of our new agency. The support that he is making, the, his support is making this all possible. And the role that you've played in the betterment of the criminal justice system and the contribution to safety cannot be overstated. So I, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Governor Jim Justice. Okay, now I know it's hot, and uh, I'll be as brief as I know how to be. One of the things that we need to clarify right off the get-go is there are real perks with this job as the governor. Like, as I pulled up here, I was on the phone and I forgot my vehicle was still in gear and it drifted into the state police vehicle. <laughs> and they didn't arrest me. That's true. I looked to see if it had done any damage to the cruiser, to the state police vehicle. I didn't look at mine, so I'm okay with mine being, being up, but um, nevertheless, this is so easy for me because you see when you start putting it all together and you've got more problems, not more problems, but you've got problems with the correctional maybe officers or whatever it may be that are leaving and coming and a turnover beyond belief and all kinds of issues. Somebody's got to address it. Somebody's got to do something. You know, at the end of the day, all we've done here is what common sense would have led us to do. We've supported the consolidation. As the Senate, the House, and myself, all of us, we have had two great people that are right in my midst that are right here today, and that's Jeff, Sandy, and Betsy. They're just unbelievable. But in addition to that, we had to pay our people to have quality people. We had to have scanners at the regional jails. We had on and on and on what we had to do. I get it. I plain get it. Now the thing that we have to have is just this, and I've said it over and over and over. In West Virginia, you have to have revenue to be able to do whatever. A lot of people don't have the guts to step forward and correct a problem when it looks like, well, where are the revenues going to come from? When in fact, you've got to have the guts to step forward and do something. Well, I don't like for that. And I can tell you with all in me, we've made the right decisions. We're moving forward. I congratulate every single one of you because you are the horses. You're the ones that are really doing it. But at the end of the day, we as a state have got to have 
the foresight to be able to make the right decisions to compensate you in a way that works and make the right decisions for our state that turn into savings and goodness for our people beyond belief. That's what we've done. So again, I congratulate the House and the Senate and all you wonderful people for all you do for this incredible community in our state in every way. We're doing good stuff in West Virginia and I'm really proud of all of you. That's for sure. You have an unbelievable county commission. You have an unbelievable president of your county commission. You absolutely are it. Nobody could be more proud than me. At the end of the day, all I want is one thing, and that's goodness for you. That's all I want, goodness for you. And at the end of the day, we're doing it. So God bless you and thank you for having me. Keep up the great work. get to cut the ribbon? Oh, Lord. I get to cut the ribbon? All right. Wait till you see this. Oh, Mike and Paul. That's dangerous. <laughs> if we can get your assistance, definitely. Bill. Following the ribbon cutting, we have one more presentation to make. While these guys are coming up here, uh, I want to thank also everybody who worked so hard to put this event together. Um, Great job. Brad Douglas, um, Larry Messina, the maintenance people from Wood County, the Honor Guard, and of course the uh, inmates that came from Parkersburg Correctional and helped with the setup as well. And now we're ready to go. Okay. We need to back the whole all right, now let's all do this together. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's do, we got to all share in this together. I'm going to just kind of hold that for the rear. Come on, we got to get in here. Betsy, you ought to get in here too. Jeff, you ought to get in here. Come on. Blair, you, t you ought to get over here, too. <coughs> but don't y'all snap my finger off. No, I'm a little worried about that. <laughs> All right. One, two, three. Ah, well, let's, let's keep working at it. <laughs> okay, let's try again. Okay. There you Good go. job. We have one more presentation. Two of the people are here who worked very hard on writing and rewriting and submitting and agonizing over the legislation that made it all possible for us to be here. And the two people that are here today of the group that worked are uh, Deputy Commissioner Mike Coleman and Stacy Nowicki, who is Assistant General Counsel for the Department of Military Affairs and Public Safety, and they have a presentation that they would like to make to Governor Justice. Well, let's go out in front. I mean, for crying out loud, let's get out here. <laughs> now, they brought me this picture, and I signed it. I had no clue they were going to give it back to me. <laughs> no, that's thank really you, not. sir. For, thank you so thank much. Thank you for your support. No, thank you so much. Thank you. Bless y'all. Thank you. That's really great. Thank you all again. Thank you for all your great work. Sure, sure. I can that. We'll dismiss once the color guard has retired the colors.
again, whoops. Again, thank you everyone for coming and thank you for all the hard work that you do every day to support uh, efforts like this. We greatly appreciate it.